welcome to the long-awaited guide on how to do big numbers on the Blood Death Knight. In Cataclysm, the Blood Death Knight is simply just a part of the DPS roster, as can be seen in some of the top percentiles where we as tanks compete with a lot of the pure DPS classes, as the low incoming damage taken in tier 11 allows us to be more aggressive with our gearing choices with very limited downside. As for making this video, I'm currently rank 1 in all separate raids, rank 1 on overall boss damage, and rank 2 on overall all-star. And while I'm in the guild with pretty good players, we are not a parsing guild by any means. So while the information that I'm about to give you may or may not be the absolute most optimal way to play, it's what has worked for me and hopefully you'll be able to learn a thing or two by watching this video. I recently started streaming over on Twitch and if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube, I'm sure you would enjoy the stream as well. I help a lot of viewers with their rotation through log review, give tips and generally just have a good time. The link to the stream is in the description if you want to go check it out. Before we get into it, let me give you a huge disclaimer. Don't be stupid. While everyone can stand to gain from this video, do not go completely overboard with your offensive choices if you are still progressing. Our choices are in a spectrum between full beefcake and full parse brain, and being completely on either side of that spectrum is likely not the optimum way for you to play the game. And with that out of the way, let's get to it. This will be a series of sorts, as this first video will be a guide that will be relevant for the entire expansion, where we will go over things such as your opener, rotation, snapshot, stat priority, and talents, while following videos will be tier specific, going into gearing and boss by boss tips. So if you want to get that information, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're notified when that goes live. The biggest thing people can do when it comes to increasing their output is obviously pressing their spells correctly. The Blood DK rotation is very forgiving, but if you're not doing certain things, then your DPS will suffer immensely. Here is how your opener should look in 99% of circumstances. At least 30 seconds before the fight, make sure you have an active bone shield. At 7 seconds before the pull, use Army of the Dead. Use Horn of Winter right after, which will put you at 30 runic power for when the fight starts. Then 1 to 2 seconds before the fight, you use a strength potion. Then once you start the fight, use the following opener sequence. Taunt, Death Strike, Heart Strike, Dancing Room Open Macro with Racial, Sign of Springs, and Potential on Use Trinkets. Then Outbreak, Death Strike, Heart Strike, Death Strike, Heart Strike, and Powered Room Weapon. Death Strike, Heart Strike, Death Strike, Rune Strike, If Runic Empowerment proc, then Blood Tap and Death Strike. If no proc, then use Heart Strike. At this point, your Dancing Room Weapon will just have timed out. We use our Race Dead now in order to snapshot it with our current buffs. We'll talk a little bit more about cool snapshotting later. After that opener, we go into our normal rotation. We prioritize keeping dots on the main target at all times, keep at least one of each rune on cooldown at all times, prioritize Death Strike over Heart Strike, and always use death runes on death strikes unless there are two or more targets in which you can get more damage by pressing heart strike but by giving up some survivability. Use blood tap whenever you have one death rune available. You'll want to stay at a high runic power level at all times and only use rune strike if you're at or above 100 runic power. Last on the priority list is blood boil which we only use if we have a crimson scourge proc and every other rotational spell is on cooldown. All right. So let's talk a little bit about snapshotting. Snapshotting is when you use a spell and gain the benefit from the stats you have at the moment in time when you press the spell, but benefit from those stats for the entire duration of the spell. As a Bloody Decay, we have three spells for which that matters. Outbreak, Dancing Room Weapon, and Pets. Outbreak is really not a big deal, but we want to make sure we have full vengeance when we use it, and using it with Dancing Room Weapon will double its effect for the entire 32 seconds that it's active. Dancing Room Open scales with pretty much everything. Obviously, we generally want to have our cooldowns up during this window anyhow, as we get the 50% amplified damage to all of our spells, but the weapon itself also has the swinging auto attack on its own, meaning that we want to use our Strength Potion and have full vengeance before we actually use it. Both Army of the Dead and Race Dead scales with Strength, Not Attack Power, and Haste. For our army, we generally don't want to use anything to snapshot it as we would lose too much uptime for that buff during the actual fight. 
But if you're sweaty and you don't have two on hit or on use trinket, you can use a trinket with a haste or strength on use effect. Then army, then swap to your normal trinket before the fight starts. For the ghoul, we'll ideally want to snapshot it with as much as possible. On hit trinkets, potion, fallen crusader, and bloodlust. Like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't scale with attack power, so no need to wait for vengeance cap or other procs before you use it. A properly snapshotted pet can be responsible for up to 5% of your overall damage depending on the length of the fight, whereas if you just pop it willy-nilly, it usually only adds up to about 1% of your overall damage. From a strictly offensive perspective, we prioritize 8% hit over expertise soft cap, over strength, over expertise hard cap, over haste until 1421, over crit, over haste past 1421, over stamina. Now, gearing in accordance with this priority will not be a good idea. We want to maintain a good amount of stamina and mastery to make sure that we survive. Jam and enchant for stamina work makes sense and maintain a mastery value that you're comfortable with. I play more offensively, so I am at around 100% mastery, but you may want to go higher if you feel like you need it. After you feel comfortable in your survivability, you would focus on the aforementioned priority list. Prioritizing haste until the 1421 mark over hard expertise cap is also not a bad idea, as even though it's a slight DPS loss, it provides some defensive value in addition to the offensive value gained. From a strictly defensive perspective, your talents may look something like this. As we get more comfortable with the raid, there are quite a few changes we can make to increase our offensive output by a significant amount. There are four stages of talents you can choose between, with the build I just showed you being the first and the most defensive build. Then stage 2 is where most people should probably be. This build takes out 2 points from Abomination's Might, assuming you have a Paladin in your raid, and 2 points out of Toughness, picking up Blood Cake Blades and 1 point in Ruining Power Mastery. This build is about 1000 extra DPS from stage 1. Stage 3 would be the build for people who have already cleared thir no, 13 heroics many times over and are comfortable with their survivability. You would drop the last point in toughness and 2 points from Wilton Necropolis in order to pick up 3 out of 3 in virulence. This will give you around 500 DPS over stage 2. Then stage 4 is for ultra parsers. The stage 4 build is for those who would gladly wipe the raid if it meant them dealing even slightly more damage. This build for Ghost Blade Barrier and Scarlet Fever to pick up Butchery, Abomination's Might, and 1 point in Morbidity. Don't run this build. For Glyphs, we always run Glyph of Death Strike, Heart Strike, and Rune Strike. Now, these are kind of the big things to keep in mind when thinking about damage as a Blood DK, but there are a ton of other changes to make, so we'll go over them in this section. Not everyone will or should make all the offensive trades from the standard beefcake builds that most existing guides, including my own, recommend. So in order to help with the decision in which offensive traits to make, I put together a tier list. Because everyone loves tier lists. The S tier are traits everyone should make regardless of where you are in your progression journey, with the rest descending in importance with F tier being only for those who don't care about defensives at all, and are willing to make terrible trades for even a bit more damage. In the S tier, we have Rune the Fallen Crusader, Strength Potions, Strength Food, Stage 2 Talents, Hit Cap, and Soft Expertise Cap. In the A tier, we have DPS Trinkets, which adds about 1k DPS per trinket, not going for tanking Forset, and decreasing your mastery to pick up more expertise and haste. In the B tier, we have Crit Meta Gem, Head and Shoulder Strength and Chance, Stage 3 Talents, and going for Expertise Hard Cap. In the C tier, we have changing Biss tanking off pieces for more offensively statted options, going more offensive and chance, like 50 strength on bracers and gloves. In the D tier, we have changes that are DPS gains, but should generally not be considered unless it's for parsing purposes, which would be going tailoring for the cloak enchant, gemming for strength over stamina, and using strength over stamina flask. In the F tier, you have changes that are DPS gains, but should realistically never be something you pursue which is going with the 4 stage talents and completely replacing any gear that has mastery on it. Ultimately, surviving comes first, and any tips in this video that sacrifices survivability for output should only be considered if you are very confident in your survivability. 
That said, completely neglecting damage for full beefiness I don't think is doing your raid any favors either. A bloody cape playing correctly will often find themselves toward the top of the meters and leaving several thousands of DPS on the table just because you as a tank have historically fulfilled a certain role is a weird and outdated way of thinking about the game. The tier 11 gearing and boss guide will come out shortly with Firelands and Dragon Soul counterparts coming out when it's appropriate. And a ton of other content is on the way. So if you like what I do, head over to Twitch and give me a follow and hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.